going to go ahead and begin our evening tonight, and I wanted to um, share some of my considerations with you about Jesus being a shepherd who gently leads his people. And I was reminded about this in a comment that was made about Jacob. Jacob in Genesis chapter 33, verses 13 and 14, and this is when um, he met Esau coming back, and Esau was pressing upon him to come and go with him. Let, let's go, let's go. And he said unto him, My Lord knoweth that the children are tender, and the flocks and herds with young are with me. If, a men, should, if men should overdrive them, one day all the flock would die. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant, and I will lead on softly, according as the cattle that goeth before me and the children be able to endure, until I come unto the my Lord in Seir. And I, that, that phrase, lead softly, reminded me of our great shepherd who gently leads. Um, in Isaiah, it speaks of our Lord, chapter 40, verse 11, Jesus, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. So considering the good shepherd, and how he gently leads. Now, first of all, this is the opposite of driving. Driving would be someone from behind forcing those that they are uh, wanting, wanting to move in a direction of their desire and of their choosing, no matter any of the circumstances, just pushing them on forward from behind. But we don't want to be as the mule. Jesus made this, um, the scriptures made this parallel. They have to have a bit and a bridle, and they have to be driven at the will of the master. We don't, we don't want to be as the mule, but we want to be treated as those with understanding. Remember the, the correlation in that verse with the mule? He had to be treated that way because he didn't have understanding. But we have been given an understanding. We know who we're following. We know where we're going. We know he knows the way, and so we want to follow him. It's our desire to follow where Christ leads us. <clears throat> now, one of the ways that he leads is through his voice. Remember in John, it says, the sheep hear his voice, and that's what we know. We won't follow any other because we are familiar with the voice of our shepherd. He gently speaks. He speaks words of comfort, words that would draw. He gives the promises the great and precious promises that would constrain us. Jesus is before us, wooing us unto him, not behind us, driving him. So as he gently leads, he speaks these promises and gives great hope so that he gives good reason for those who are coming to follow him. In order for Jesus to gently lead his people, he must not only know the needs of his people that are following him, but he also must need to know the way that lies ahead of them, where the pitfalls are, where the snares might be laid, where the good feeding grounds are, or the streams that he can lead them to to be refreshed. All of these things Jesus has to know in order to lead gently. He leads us in the right way, the way that is bringing his desired end, which is also our desired habitation. And I've been reading Hind's Feet in High Places lately, and was reminded about this, um, the traveler, much afraid. She knew her destinations were in the high places, the mountains. And at times, the shepherd was leading her in the opposite direction, even out of sight where she couldn't even see her destination any farther. And so she was tempted to think that this was the wrong way, that she wasn't in the way that was going to lead to that desired habitation. But there was always a design. When she would ask the shepherd, why am I going away from my destination? He always had a design in leading her the way he did. Either it was to strip her of something of her old nature, her old family, her old way of living, or it was to add to her the things that she had need to dwell in the places of the heights, to for form her into the creature that could live there. Um, in Psalm 107, verse 7, it says, And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. So no matter what it seems to be, the Lord is always leading us in the right way. Mm -hmm. Psalm 23 has a lot of um, illustrations of the Lord's gentle leading. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There is no lack in following this. A gentle leader will provide every need of those that are following him. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, places of safety 
where there's an abundance of resources that we have need of, that we require to be nourished and strengthened for the journey. He leadeth me beside the still waters. There's, this is a place of quiet refreshment, a place of retreat from the harshness of the journey, maybe. But all of these are the gentle leading of Jesus. He restores my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Now the shadow of death, we will be led into these places. In the right way, we will be led into places like the shadow of death. But it's so that the Lord can comfort us there and reassure us, even though you walk through the valley, I will be with you. I'm comforting you. I'm going to succor you. And his presence gives us confidence not to fear. Now, the reason that he knows this path so well is, first of all, he's traveled it before. But more than that is that he has blazed this trail himself. He's the one that made this way. He makes the path in such a way that those who follow him through it will be able to triumph. He goes before us, exalting the valleys and making the hills and the mountains low. He makes the crooked ways straight and the rough places plain. Also, all of this so that we will be given every advantage in progressing in that way, making progress and going ahead. Now, there are some things that we must encounter that make the way seem hard. There might be some things. But if we remember that it's all given in mercy in everything, then we'll remember the purpose that it was given, to draw us closer to himself. I was able to minister this to Sister Rachel today, and actually it was because of Sister Logan's choice of song for the Lord's Table Meditation. She played the song, and just because I knew the words, they were coming through my mind, and it says, All that thou sendest me in mercy given, but all of these things are to lead us nearer, nearer, my God, to thee. That's the only way that will profit us if we have this understanding. So when the, when the way seems really steep or the valleys seem very deep, the path seems too narrow, then we cling more closely to our Savior in those times. And sometimes even in the hardest of the way, he will carry us. Like the text in Isaiah said, he will carry those. But each of us have to keep in mind that the right way for me might not be identically the same right way for you. That there is, one, there is one way, one right way that we're all traveling on. But if I'm led into an area of suffering that you may not endure, we have to think about this soberly. You may not have had to touch that because there might not have, there was a design in you not touching it and a design for me in having to pass through it. But it was the right way for me and you are following in the right way for you. The Lord knows each and every one of us. This is part of his gentle leading, and he'll lead us where we need to be traversing. So in bringing us here tonight, I see that this is a gentle leading of the Lord here in this meeting. This is like a time of reprieve, like the, whenever the children of Israel came to Elam, where there were 12 wells or the springs of water and 70 palm trees where they could rest themselves and be re renewed and strengthened and they could nourish themselves for the journey that is ahead. This is what we have here. And this is a token of the Lord's gentle leading, leading us in these areas. So we can be thankful for him leading us here, the gentleness that brought us here, and then take advantage of the things that he provides so we can be strengthened for the rest of the journey. Amen. We'll open with a word of prayer.